In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you the new rigid track saw. It's 18 volt, it's brushless, and I'm going to show you some accessories to go along with it and demonstrate to you how to use it. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Josh. This channel is all about DIY to save a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for in turn for making this video. So this track saw looks really cool. I can't wait to unbox it. Let's get started. For full disclosure, Rigid did send me this track saw so I could give you my unbiased opinion opinion and review of this tool. First thing I wanted to point out to you, if you look at the front of the box, it says tool only in this box, but it actually includes a track that goes up to 55 inches and also it has one clamp with it. So accessories that you can purchase are additional clamps. Here are two clamps here and they also have the track that you can purchase separate as well. So you can actually extend the track that comes with the saw with this additional track or use it independently. So I wanted to point that out before we get started. So that way you know if you're looking to purchase this, what to expect in the box. But let's go ahead and unbox this thing. I'm just gonna start right here in the end and I'm gonna unbox this fairly quick. Right off the bat, in the first section of the box, we got the owner's manual and the single clamp that I mentioned to you already. We're just gonna set that to the side. And now we're gonna pull this box out of here. Right here at the top, we got a saw blade. It's a six and a half inch blade that goes on the saw. And here is the actual track saw itself. My first impression of this is it's actually built much heavier duty than what I expected. So that's a good plus and it actually feels good to grip and let's see what else is in the box now here we got the actual track and as you can see it comes in two separate pieces 27 and a half inches is what each one of these measures supposedly so put these together and this is going to give you a 55 inch track and it actually sends the hardware in order to connect this so i'm going to show you how to do that as well and as far as unboxing goes, that is all that is in the box. I'm going to begin set up by installing this six and a half inch blade that came with it. This is a 40 tooth blade. And if we take a look on the back of the saw, it comes with the Allen wrench in order to undo the arbor to install the blade. So if we take a look right here is where the arbor is gonna come up and there's a setting here. All we gotta do is release it and then it's gonna spring up and we're gonna lock it right into position to expose the arbor right here to install the blade. So all we gotta do here now is turn it counterclockwise if I'm looking down at the saw and we're gonna take the arbor nut out. And I'm now gonna install the blade to where the writing of rigid is facing out like so. And now I'm gonna reinstall the arbor nut and washer. And now you're gonna turn this clockwise in order to tighten this down and secure it into place using the Allen wrench. And just like any other saw, there is a lock right here in order to lock the arbor so you can tighten it down. And that's nice and snug. And now we're ready to go. And then I'm just gonna put the Allen key right back in the back of this saw. I'd now like to demonstrate to you how to adjust the bevel. If you take a look here, this is your adjustment here in the reading. And then this is a knob to tighten it from the front and there's a knob to tighten from the back. So you wanna make sure you loosen the back knob and the front knob whenever you go to make your adjustment. And there is positive stops at 22 and a half then there's one at 45 and if you want it to go to 47 degrees you do got to turn this little switch to in order to get to 47 degrees as you can see there and then once let's say you want to lock it 47 degrees you would simply tighten down your front wing nut and then your back wing nut and now we're ready to make the cut and also if we want to go to negative one all we got to do we'll loosen that up Loosen this up on the back. And then we'll go down until we get to zero. And then from here, we wanna make sure we pull this lever that's right here to show to decompress it back. And then it lets it drop down to negative one for making any really fine cuts. And that's how you make your bevel adjustments. 
So, and again, the positive stops are the ones you're going to be using the most. So let's say we want to stop at 45. We just go to 45 like so, and then lock it into place. Very simple to do. And it seems like these work really smooth. So you're not going to have any issues there. I'm now going to demonstrate to you the use of this switch here. This switch will indicate whenever you're going to be using it for actual work. So as you can see here, if you push this up, it's going to release this. So it'll actually plunge like so. And then if you put it up in this position, it's going to lock it and you can't pull the trigger or anything. So with that being said, if you slide this down, it's going to lock right here at first. And this is the position we had it in to service the blade. And then let's say we got to take it down all the way to lock. It'll stop in the very bottom position as well. So clear down at the bottom and then it's going to lock it with the blade all the way out. And we got our knife all the way out as well. So that's only for if you're going to be making adjustments or whatnot. But for right now, I'm going to show you how to position the depth gauge. If we take a look here, we got our orange measurement and then we got our white measurement here. And the difference is if you look at this icon, this shows the saw on a track and this shows the saw not on a track. So this is going to be your depth gauge in inches when the saw is not on the track. And this is going to be when the saw is in the track. Another important note too, if you take a look at that white line, that is the scoring depth. If you just want to score and that's going to be a positive stop on your depth gauge. So if you take a look, it'll stop right there for scoring your material. And if you stop right here, that zero. And then if we're not on the track, that's zero if you're not on the track. And then if you go down here, that's going to be locked right at one inches if we're on the track. And if we want to be off the track at one inches, we're right here. So just so you understand. And then let's say we're going to go for half inch on the track. It's going to stop here. And then if we take a look here, we're back in our position in order to actually operate the tool. And then we're going to go down and it's going to stop in the half inch position. So let's say I want to stop at a quarter inch right here while we're in the track. So we put it in that position and then we want to make sure this is in the operating mode, which it is right now, as you can see. And now whenever we put our safety forward, it releases it so it will plunge and it releases the trigger. So it's going to stop right there at a quarter inch depth. On the back of the saw, we got the dust collection port. And here is where you're gonna hook your shop vac or whatnot if you're in a workshop in order to collect the dust. While I'm out in the field, I usually don't use this unless I'm in a shop condition on any tool. But if we take a look at the bottom here, we got the Allen wrench that we use to install the saw blade. And we also got an Allen wrench or Allen key, I should say, for putting the track together. So we're going to need this here now. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this to put the track together. I'm now gonna put the track together and I'll tell you what, the material that this is built out of feels really good, lightweight and strong. I do like that. And it actually has a nice gunmetal look to it. And I really like the finish on it as well. And it feels nice and smooth. So it seems like a good quality track that comes with it. So in order to put this together, we're first gonna lay this out and then flip it upside down. This is the Allen key that came out of the back of the saw. I'm first gonna unloosen these screws here that are holding the connector bars onto the track. And then after we got those loose, we're gonna butt the two pieces of the track together like so. Then we're gonna slide this connector bar into the other track like so. And I'm gonna try to divide them equally. And now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this other side down and just snug them up. You don't wanna tighten these down really hard because you can risk dimpling the other side of the track. So you wanna just tighten these down relatively snug. You don't wanna overkill on the tightness. I'm now gonna take a straight edge. I'm gonna use my framing square here just to make sure when I tighten this other side down that we're perfectly flush on the edge of this track. All right, that's all there is to putting the two pieces together. I'm now gonna place my Allen key back in the saw. This is a clamp that came with the tool. In order to use it, all you gotta do is slide this end 
right into the track like so and then slide it back to your material and then tighten it down using the knob on the clamp. And now what we all been waiting for is actually placing the saw on the track and using it. I'm now gonna install a six amp hour battery right here where the battery port is. And also this six amp hour battery will make 370 linear feet of half inch OSB cuts. So that's a lot of cutting down using just a six amp hour battery. And this is sold separately. This did not come with the saw. I'm now just gonna lock the saw onto the track by sliding this lever over. And now the saw is attached right to the track for stability. And then I'm gonna test to see how well it glides. If you notice it's too loose, all you have to do is tighten these down right here and right here in order to adjust the play and make it tighter. As you can see, it slides a little harder with those tightened. If you loosen them down a little bit, it's gonna loosen it up. So. That's just to make the adjustment to get the play out of the track. For the first cut, as you can see, when we plunge down, it hits that rubber strip. We need to make our first cut without any material under it first in order to get a fine cut on that rubber strip. That's something that you do have to do with new track saws. I'm first going to decompress the safety switch up top and pull the trigger. I'm gonna take the saw off the track and now we know the edge of that rubber is the edge of our saw blade. So whenever we lay it up to cut something, we know we just gotta line the edge of that rubber up to make the cut. I'm now gonna unclamp this from the half inch OSB and slide it over. And we're gonna cut this OSB to make a nice straight cut in order to cut off this rough edge here just so you can see how it cuts half inch OSB. I'm gonna adjust my depth gauge down to a stop of just a little over a half inch to cut through the half inch sheathing. And that, my friends, is a perfectly straight cut. Important note when purchasing this track saw, the track that comes with the tool is only long enough to cut four foot material. So you can cut widthwise off of a four foot sheet of plywood, for instance. But let's say you had to make a long rip off a piece of plywood. Well, that track simply isn't going to be long enough because it's only 55 inches long. So Rigid does sell an additional track you can purchase. This is a 60 inch track. And this track in conjunction with the track that comes with the saw can rip down eight foot long pieces of sheathing or any type of plywood or anything you need to rip down that's eight foot long. So you definitely wanna keep that in mind or you don't have to rip it down, but cutting it down. So I'm gonna unbox this and show you that. And also you can buy additional clamps, which you're gonna need this if you're gonna have a longer track to deal with because you need a clamp on each side of the track for sure when you're gonna be ripping or cutting something down that's eight foot long. I'm just gonna unbox this for you. It also comes with its own Allen key. My first impression here is that it's the exact same track that came with the saw other than it's one piece and it's longer and it has the same exact build quality and it really does seem to be a good material in which it's built out of. And it also has rubber on the back so it'll stick to the material easier as you're cutting. And the front has these little plastic strips so it glides easy just like the track that came with the saw. So it seems to be a great addition if you're gonna be buying this saw. And also I'm gonna unbox these clamps or open up the package. And these clamps are the exact same idea, same exact clamp that came with the saw other than there's additional ones. So very nice. It's something you're gonna wanna consider if you're buying this saw. All right, in order to join this track to the other one, same setup, we got our connector rods here in the back and we're gonna loosen them up and connect the track together and cut down something a little longer than four foot. All right, we are now connected together. Let's rip down this piece of sheathing. Wow, this thing is much longer now. As you can see, we're gonna have plenty of length to cut across this piece of sheathing. This sheathing is probably only about five foot long, but it's because it was cut out of a window. 
So I'm going to take my clamp, slide them into each side and clamp it down. All right, now I'm going to test see how well the transition from track to track goes. All right, yeah, that worked great. Definitely no issues there. So definitely a nice addition to the kit. A few more things I wanted to touch base on. This dust collecting port fits the common inch and a quarter and inch and seven eighths, and it will pivot 360 so you can get the adjustment that you need. This bottom is aluminum, so that's definitely a nice finish and nice and lightweight, so that's very nice to have. We got our magnesium side here. We got some strips here to protect the face if you're tight up against the wall or something. It doesn't scar the nice branding here, so that's always a plus. And then if we take a look around this side, we got our brushless emblem here, so we know our motor's brushless and our track will accept accessories from different manufacturers, not just rigid. So if you have clamps that came with Milwaukee or whatnot, it will fit this track, so that's nice. But the saw will not fit the track. The only thing that'll fit this track is the rigid saw. You can't put any other brand saw on this track, just so you're aware. And we also have this window here for more precision depth cutting and our knife that pops out that's right there. That's a nice feature to have as well. So that is the rundown on this saw. And it is claimed to have the same power using a corded saw as this saw. So that's something you're going to have to experiment this for yourself to see what you think. So overall, after using it here for a couple cuts, I do think this is a good saw. And I like the, how this adjustment is. As you can see, the depth is right here. And the deep as it'll go is two and an eighth here with the track and two and a quarter without the track. And all in all, I don't think you're gonna go wrong with this saw made by Rigid. So that is my two cents on this and I really think this is gonna hold up well over time. If you'd like to check out my other tool reviews, check out this video and check out this playlist. They'll help you out.